you are using Nano Banana all wrong. Because instead of playing around with the clothes you're wearing or what the background looks like, you could be taking any image you want and turning it into five, 10, 100 pieces of marketing material with the click of a button. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. We are gonna combine the power of NADN and Nano Banana to create a content machine that allows us to take any image we want and turn it into hundreds of pieces of marketing material. And we're gonna control all this inside of Airtable. So we have a one-stop shop from beginning to end. We got a ton to cover in this video, so let's get started. So I wanted to kick this video off by diving into a demo, but before we do that, let's talk about what problem we're actually solving with this automation, right? So imagine you have an image. Let's take a look at the one we're using here. This is a old Galaxy ad. What if I asked you, hey, I want you to give me 10, 20, 50, 100 different versions of this ad, right? I like the general style, but I actually wanna see it in a bunch of different ways, right? I want you to change the lighting, I want you to change the background, the mood, the text, all that. Keep the core images the same, but like, let's do some ideation. How would you do that? Well, either you could go inside of Photoshop and do that painstakingly, or you could go to Nano Banana and do it one at a time. Or we just automate the whole thing. And that's what this does. This allows us to take a single image like this Galaxy ad, it doesn't have to be an ad, it could be a picture of your dog, and we just give it a bunch of information about what changes we want it to make, and then we let it go crazy at whatever scale we want, right? This automation solves the problem of marketing material ideation at scale, because I can do five, 10, 15, a billion of these, it's the same amount of work for me, and at the end, I just press this little red button. And the prompts we create are pretty detailed, right? We go through text, color palette, atmosphere, style, lighting, composition, settings, core subject, right? And I can keep things the same, change whatever I want, but I do it all here through Airtable. And again, I can do it at scale. Now, you're obviously thinking, that's a lot of stuff for me to fill out. Well, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how we can automate all that too, while still maintaining some control. But now you can kind of understand, what's the point of this? So let's actually try it out. So like I said, we got this Galaxy image. We have five here that are set to be created, right? They've been tagged as create. You can see they all have different kind of prompts. One talks about futuristic neon cityscape. We have a minimalist one, right? All over the place. Now all we have to do is we just need to click on this button and this is gonna send a call to our webhook over at NADN and this thing's gonna start working in the background. You can see here over on the left, it's already begun its execution. And now all we have to do is wait about 50 seconds. Okay, so it completed in 48 seconds. So let's hop back into Airtable. And you can see over here on the right, we have the images it created. You know, some of these are kind of okay, right? Celebrate every moment, this looks kind of corny, but some of these actually look pretty good, right? And the great thing about this is we can do it at such a scale that, hey, maybe, eight out of 10 aren't exactly what we want, but ultimately you probably just need one piece of marketing material you love to keep pushing it forward. And above all, you can always play around with the prompts. And it's super easy to look at, right? I can go to gallery, I can see everything I've done up until this point. And I really like Airtable being the focus of this. And you can see some we did with an Aston Martin car because you see a lot of automations that live in like Telegram, even my last video did that, and that's not sustainable, right? You're never gonna run your creative suite from Telegram. So that's how this works though, right? We're gonna put images inside of Airtable, we're gonna give it prompts, and then we're gonna get a final output. So now that you've seen the demo, let's actually go under the hood and see how this is working. Here's where I also wanna remind you that you can get this template for free. Just go down to the link below, head to my free school, download this template, upload it, do the same for Airtable as well. And there's a link to the Airtable template here inside the NADN template. And you can go ahead and follow along as we do this. So you can get it up and running as you watch this video. So once you've uploaded your template, let's run through this from the top. So we have the webhook, which triggers once you press that button inside of Airtable. We grab the image URL from Airtable. We then send that image to Gemini. You could also have this go to ChatGPT to analyze the image. And we're having it create a prompt based on the original image, right? A description of the image. We want this because this is more information we can send AI down the road. So we get a more accurate recreation at the end. After that, we get all the information from Airtable that we need. So if a row was marked as create, it's then gonna grab all the information from that row, namely like, hey, the subject, the setting, the composition, lighting, the style, right? All that prompt information, that's what's happening here. 
We then feed all that new prompt information into this AI prompt. This is using Gemini. It could be open AI, doesn't matter. And this outputs the nano banana prompt we're gonna use, right? Once we have that edit prompt, we then send that request to open router, which is what we're using to go talk to nano banana. It creates the image, and then we then upload that image to Airtable. Simple enough, really three parts. We get the data, we create the prompt, and then we create and upload the image. Data, prompt, create. That's all that's happening. Now let's take a look at every module. Now let's go through every module one by one so I can show you what you need to connect, what you need to update to make this working for you. So the webhook, let's take a look at this guy. So we have our test and production URL. I want you to do this right now. I want you to copy the production URL. I want you to go inside your nano uh, banana template on Airtable. You're gonna go to trigger N8N workflow. You're gonna go to edit field. And you're gonna need to update this URL formula right here with your webhook, right? That's all you gotta do. Once you do that, hit save, and that will mean, that will allow it to trigger once you press this button. So you'll press the button and the webhook will work. Nothing else you need to worry about here. Next, we get our image URL. So obviously we need to connect to Airtable. So to connect to Airtable, it's pretty easy. I want you to just go to open docs here and just follow the documentation. For the sake of this video not being 40 minutes long, I'm not gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to do this. And then documentation is really good. Could you be doing this whole thing in Google Sheets? Yeah, you could, but frankly, if you haven't begun to migrate from Google Sheets to Airtable, I think this is a great time to do it because Airtable is frankly just a little more robust. And so once you connect your Airtable, we're doing resource, we're doing get, your base is gonna be nano banana ad machine or whatever you named it, table one, and then the record ID we are pulling from our webhook. All that is done so we can get the image URL. And the image URL, coming back to here, is the URL for these images, right? So. What is the URL for this guy? That's what we're doing. And then once I get that URL, I'm sending it to Gemini. Again, this doesn't have to be Gemini. You could be using OpenAI Analyze Image, but we just need to send the image to AI so we can get a prompt. We need that starting prompt. So you can see the prompt here, right? And it's describing that original image, right? Hey, close up of a hand, teal, long sleeve shirt, blah, 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 blah. This, the whole reason we're doing this you might be like, oh, why do we need this? I could just skip this, it's getting the image anyway. By doing this, we have a better chance of that final image being more accurate, right? Because the biggest boon of Nano Banana is its character consistency, and this helps that. And so that's what you see here inside the system prompts where it just talks about, hey, I want you to break it down on these eight points. I want you to get very specific about the subject, the setting, the medium, all that stuff. And the only thing we're passing is the URL. There's nothing you should, there's nothing you should have to change here. Next, we go to create rows. So we're going get create rows. Again, what are we doing? If this was set to create, and this is set to create, it's now going to take a look at all this row data and get it for us, right? All the prompt stuff. And inside here, just make sure it's connected to the correct base table. Filter by formula, right? That's how it knows to get the create ones. And then I'm just making sure it outputs specific things we care about, right? These are the things we care, AKA the prompt info. And again, you see the output reflected here on the right where we're grabbing the core subject, composition, lighting style, blah, 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 all the prompt stuff. That's all that's happening in part one, which is our get data. Next becomes the area where we create the prompt. This is the prompt that we're gonna eventually give to Nano Banana to make our image. And so, we have two things. We have the user prompt and the system prompt. For the user prompt, what are we passing? We're passing all that prompt information, right? All the edit prompt information, subject, composition, lighting, everything up here is being passed. For the system prompt, we're just telling it, hey, you create prompts for AI image editors. I want you to include the following guidelines. And then we also pass that original image prompt that we made back here. All right, remember this guy? This gets sent to him. That way he can be like, okay, I know what the prompt should look like. Now, once that prompt gets created, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna pass that to Nano Banana, and we're doing that via open router. As for what you need to change here, well, you need to have an open router API. So to get to open router's API, you're gonna actually just click here. This is gonna take you to the Google Gemini 2.5 Flash image preview page. But once you create an account with open router, you're just gonna to come to the right, you're gonna to go to keys, 
and you're going to go to create API key. For Open router, I also suggest putting some money in there. I put in like 10 bucks because I'll show you here in a second. There is a free version of Nano Banana that we're able to use. Just understand your rate limited. So if you are doing a ton of images like I was doing earlier today, you may have to switch for the paid one, in which case it's like, I think four cents per image. But I'll show you how to do the free and how to toggle between them. It's pretty easy. So go ahead and create an API key. So then you're gonna do generic credential type, header off, open router. For open router, now the way you're gonna do that in here is you'll click that button. The name will be authorization. And then for the value, you're gonna do bearer, space, and then cot, and then paste your API key. So it should be authorization, bearer, space, paste your API key there. And then you'll just switch it back to fixed and you'll be connected. Now, what are we actually gonna be passing here? You don't need to send headers. We're just gonna be sending a JSON body. And you'll see here what we send are really two things. So for the text prompt, we are sending both the original image prompt and the requested edit prompt. That way it knows, hey, this is what the original image looks like, and here are the edits I want to make. You shouldn't need to touch this, right? I have it specifically set up this way with Stringify stuff to deal with like quotation marks that are occurring when it's creating those prompts. So keep the names of the modules as they are, right? Because if you change the name from original image prompt or from requested edit prompt, it's gonna mess with this. So you shouldn't be touching those anyway, just leave this as is. Lastly, we send the image URL, that way Nano Banana can actually get the image we wanted to edit. Again, there's nothing you should change here. Actually, I lied, there is something you can change here. So the model, remember how I said this could be free? That makes it free. So again, paid, and that's what you're gonna see when you use the template, free. Start with the free, just put it in there. Um, you may have to go to paid again if you start getting rate limited, and you'll know if you're getting rate limited because it's gonna tell you. Now, I do my best to help with the rate limiting by batching this, so I have one item being sent every five seconds. Um, you can play with that as you wish, but I don't think you should be running into issues unless you're absolutely abusing the free tier like I was. So nothing else you guys should really have to touch here. Again, everything's in the template. Now, once this runs, you're gonna see something like this, like do you want it to show the data? So it's in base 64, so essentially it's like 10 billion lines of like text and numbers. Don't have it show the data. You don't need to see that. It doesn't really matter right now because we're just gonna be uploading that base 64 directly to Airtable. Uh, the reason this is an HTTP node and not an Airtable node is because for whatever reason, Airtable didn't wanna make an NNN module you know, that allows us to do this. So we kind of have to do it the old fashioned way and I'll show you how. So pay extra attention to this part because there are some things you need to edit that aren't super obvious. So first of all, it's gonna be post. For this URL, all right, you see this part that I have highlighted, this app 60Z, blah, 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 blah. You need to change this. So you need to go back to Airtable and you see here where after .com slash, you have this little section. So for me, it says airtable.com slash app 60Z3, blah, 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 blah. You need to copy paste whatever that is for you. Go back and edit in and replace this, okay? That needs to be changed. Now you don't have to change this map section and this nano image. This is a reflection of this Airtable row, nano image. So if you change this to something else, you need to update this. If you don't touch anything, leave it the same. So that's what we're gonna be sending the image to. Next for authentication, you're gonna do predefined credential type. You're gonna do Airtable personal access token API. And then all you're gonna do here, again, at this point, you should have already connected your Airtable by following these documents. So you should know what your access token is. If you get confused, go through the docs. It'll show you exactly what to do. Next, we have the JSON we're passing. And this is pretty simple. It's just the content type, which is image slash PNG. The file type, Again, you shouldn't have to play with this. And over here on the right, remember how I said we didn't have to show the data because of the base 64? That's what you see over here. See the little scroll bar on the right? Notice how it hasn't moved at all? Yeah, that's why you don't need to show the data. <laughs> and then file name, you can just keep it as generated image. It literally doesn't matter. You shouldn't have to touch this either. Other than that, you're all set. From there, we then just update the status of our row. So if we go inside of Airtable here, you'll see, make sure you're connected to the correct base and table, column to match on, it's ID, and we're using the capital ID, and then we just mapped it. So I just took um, 
get create rows. See this big ID here? I just put it in there. That's all I had to do. And then we change status from create to completed. That's it. Other than that, we have an error um, section here. So if for whatever reason we have a problem with nano banana, it's going to go down this route and it's going to update the status to error. But my suggestion is whenever you're running um, this automation from Airtable, you just pop into here and you go to executions and you kind of should have your eye on this in case something weird happens, like you forgot to put an image in or whatever. So that's how the NADN section of this works. And like I said, surprisingly simple for what we're doing. You know, it's pretty lean, which is why I love it. Now, the last part we need to talk about is probably going a little bit more in depth of like, okay, if I want to do this myself, what does it actually look like on a blank slate? So we're back inside of Airtable, and if I was on a new row, how would I actually make this work for real? So first, we're going to give it an image. So we're just going to dump this picture of this Aston Martin into here, right? So this is what we're working with. And so we have all these fields that we need to fill out. Like I said before, we could do this manually, right? If you really want to take charge, you can specifically say, here's the core subject, the setting, all that stuff. But what I've created for you is I've created a custom GPT to help facilitate this, especially when we're doing it at scale. So here's that custom GPT. There's a link to this GPT inside of the NADN template itself. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna stick the image that you wanna edit in there, and then you're just gonna tell it what you want it to do. So I just wrote, keep the car as the main image, go crazy on everything else, especially the lighting. I also want it to be minimalistic. And I'll say, give me five of them. So I want it to give me five rows worth of information. I could do 10, 20, whatever. And so you see, just does it all on its own. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. Copy, we're gonna go back here and I need to make sure I have enough rows ready to go. So I'm just gonna add four more and then you can zoom out a little bit and then I'm just gonna paste it all in here. Pasted. Zoom back in. If I go here, like with the image, you can just drag this down again, just like Google Sheets or Excel. And so now we're ready to go, right? Five images, five different prompts. What do I have to do? Just hit the button. Okay, it tells us workflow was started. Go back inside N8N. Go to executions. And now we just got to wait about a minute. And that's that easy and that quick to get this automation up and running. All right, so just finished. So let's check them out inside of Airtable. And uh, yeah, I think these look pretty good. I didn't give it a ton of guidance, right? I basically just said, keep the car and keep it minimalist. And again, it did all these in 50 seconds. And you have to ask yourself, how long would it have taken me on my own to create this one at a time to get it to this level? Probably a while. And again, when you do so many, it's great because then you just pick the handful that you want, right? So cast a wide net. You probably have a few you like, and then you can take those and edit them some more. Pretty cool. So that's it for this video, guys. As I said before, the template is in the school, and that template includes links to the Airtable template as well as a custom GPT. Now, real quickly, what's on the horizon for this? Well, in the next video, I'm going to show you, okay, now we have some still images we really like. How can we turn them into videos? And it's actually pretty easy to get to that step when we're already here. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you sub and I'll see you around.